switch off the mic. Yeah, then you heard Mother's Day, right? <laughs> Lucky TG told me, otherwise I'll go to the toilet and then you hear watering sound. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. As we come before you, we lay our hopes on your name. We lay our worries on the cross. And in exchange, we receive your peace. May your peace flood us. May your feet, may the gospel encourage us. May we hear testimonies of your goodness in the lives of people. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. We have some uh, newcomers. Today, Wing has come back. Uh, I just went to Wing. I think, as usual, sometimes on Friday, nothing to do. No, I actually got things to do. I'll tell them, come Saturday and bring someone. And he scrambled. And as a product of his scrambling, his friend Ben is here. Ben, I'll have you know that your T-shirt is prophetic. Uh, ben is, uh, I don't know why he's wearing this, but he wore this. His, his T-shirt says, Holy Spirit. And I will have you know, and uh, Esther will confirm, Esther confirmed that I told you in the next few weeks, whatever songs we choose will be about the Holy Spirit. Is that correct? So I'm telling you, God can speak through T-shirts. God can speak through anything. I'm telling you now, the plan was for, uh, uh, for us to talk a bit more about the Holy Spirit in the next four weeks. So Ben, uh, thank you for coming here with the T-shirt. It takes someone bold to, to wear kind of T-shirt. Don't always just wear, just wear Liverpool or Man U. I mean, after a while, who wants to wear those T-shirts all the time, right? But as we come before God, we know that God's going to do something special. We welcome Olivia, who's here. After some time, uh, the friend is here. Welcome. I was originally thinking of asking Olivia to come and share first, but Never mind, you just came in. I will not stress you. You get ready later, a mic will be given to you. I, I have a, a series of messages, and I think God prompted my heart to just share a few things about a man and a woman of potential. And today, as I start, as usual, as all good lawyers should do, we should realize that, number one, I don't know why I'm saying this, life is short. Just a couple, of yesterday, or obituary today, if you check, this is a guy called Philip Tay. Philip Tay, Raja Antan, my batch, just passed on a couple of days back. And two weeks ago, another lady called Malafi, also my batch, very nice lady, passed on, just like that. If not 55, at most 56, if not minus two, army, 53 years old. No warning, and I thought, you know what I mean, in the peak of the career, right? Just gone. I live every day. I tell my football friends, and later you see a video as well. I tell my football friends, Gun, whenever I have an extra Sunday to play with the blessings of my family and my wife, I cherish every Sunday I get to play. When I come to Saturday, I can speak here and I can speak and my eyes are open, I can see things I cherish because I don't know when I'm going to go. How about you? When I have a chance to have a drink with Nyap, when Nyap comes and give me one nice uh, red wine, I will not reject. I'll say thank you so much. I will drink it. I will savor every sip. The last part, I will just make sure I get the thing into my tongue and throw it. Guys, life is short. You don't know when you're going to go. And it's not a curse. I'm telling you the truth. And please don't look at me and think that you are younger than me and therefore you will go later than me. Who knows? I've known of people who die at the peak, 30-something, 40-something, just like that. Hurt too many, but reminded of our frailties in life. So I want to just encourage you about God's in the house, and let's hear God about this subject of potential. I, I went through this, and I thought I would want to do a mini-series on the book of Judges. And if you look at the book of Judges, there are a lot of characters in there that are worth not judging, but worth thinking about. And you have the famous people like uh, Gideon. Gideon is famous enough. Uh, Samson, all know about Samson, all know about Gideon. I want to tell you this. Samson is not what you think it is. If you think of Samson, you, you, who do you think of? Do you, when you think of Samson, do you think of people like Wing, or do you think of people like Leon? Who? You think Samson is big, right? But actually, he's not. Because if he's so big and strong, then people will not be saying, how come he got so much strength? Because you look and say, he looks like Wing, he's so big, of course strong. He is actually not a very big man. Maybe a bit like a gun, tiny, tiny, but slender. But God's power came upon him. Do you understand? So I want to just tell you sometimes, uh, don't, be careful what caricatures you see. You see, you see people draw Samson, Samson, some long hair, and then his hair was shorn off because, you know, he cut his hair. Big size guy, he's not, no. <laughs> Maybe he looks a bit like Owen. Owen Samson cannot be. Owen, I thought Samson looked a bit more like Wing, but it is not. Men of potential. Who are the people that have potential and what do they do? Mini series on the book of Judges and Philip just scroll down with me when I tell you go to the next slide. Potential, first slide. Meaning, when you talk about potential, you're talking about someone showing or having the capacity to develop into something in the future. One more time. If I say Olivia has potential, she shows or has the capacity to develop into something in the future. 
What do you think of yourself or what others think of you? Potential. Do you think that uh, Winnie think, yeah, I think I have the potential to be the CEO one day? Or people will think of Winnie and say, Winnie, I think, has the potential to be someone. Not prophetic. Am I saying something that you shouldn't be hearing? But you, when you go for interviews nowadays, I talk to some young 18-year-olds, when they go for their interviews, right? they will tell you your, what do you call it? Royston, tell me. Is it called CPE? They tell you your career potential, whatever, CPE. So that when you go for interview, you know that if you accept this, your rank could be, if you don't get it wrong, you hit this rank. So people tell you of your career potential when you go for interviews. When, when I don't know whether in the banks or in the firms or whatever, I always, I always tell people when you join me, let me tell you if you, don't, if, you, if you get right, even if you're not a lawyer, you can hit this amount and you can be a very good senior executive. So we're always talking about potential. Showing or having capacity to develop into something in the future. Let me tell you, next thing that we always talk about potential, you, maybe you always talk about someone having potential. It's like, for example, if I say a Sabrina's potential, so Sabrina is someone who's got the right skill set, the aptitude. Let me just give you the next slide, aptitude and attitude. Aptitude alone cannot guarantee success. When we talk about someone having potential, but just because you have the talent doesn't mean that you make it. Aptitude alone cannot guarantee success. The talent, if you have any, must be combined with a powerful mind and a great fortitude to lead to success. Some people that I know of don't go to the next slide yet, but examples of people, uh, a lot of football players, we think they'll make it, but they don't make it. Uh, some of you, if you watch football, I watch a lot of football. There's this guy called Freddy Adu. I don't even know whether you know of him. Long time ago, this guy called Freddy Adu, they say he was going to be the next Pele. Who doesn't know Pele? Sabrina doesn't know Pele. No? Even Sabrina knows Pele. Pele is the great Brazilian football star, 80, 81 years old, getting a bit sick, and maybe time to go home soon. But the Freddy Adu at 14 was dubbed the next Pele. He was given a contract by Nike and given, I think, 700,000. At, at that time, he was 14. 700,000 Nike is a big deal. But guess what? He didn't make it. He bombed out. He played uh, Major League Soccer in US. Uh, honestly, US Soccer League, the standard's not the highest. If he was any good, he would be in Real Madrid or whatever now. Didn't make it. Dubbed the next Pele. Next Pele didn't make it. Now show the next slide. But yet at the same time, there are some people like this guy on the right side. Leon. Dub the next nothing. Let me tell you a story about Leon. And it's all Faith's fault because I had dinner with Faith and Philip last week. We have been looking for someone to be the next sound person. Otherwise, you what? Philip and Faith all the time there. They also need holiday, right? So we have been trying to look for people and uh, some people we look for. Uh, we had a few people. I think uh, Philip and Faith will tell you he is now the fourth person trying this. The rest all fell out for whatever reason. This is fine. I don't know why I picked Leon. But suddenly one day he said, well, shoot, we need to find someone. And then every time when I come in, right, the first people that are in the hall are Leon and June. Le June is the one, you know, last time in Malacca, uh, she's, here, she's not here today, I can say anything about her. June's the last time in Malacca, I go to the church, uh, she'll sweep the floor time. That means every time or so will be there early. And so she'll be here and with the kids, and then suddenly she's doing the kids' ministry today. And then Leon's sitting down there. I said, Some, something told me, approach Leon. So I went to Leon and said, Leon, I didn't approach. I called him up. I think so. I said, Leon, can you help? We need a voice person. No, a voice person. <laughs> we need a sound person. I still don't know what to tell him. I mean, if you ask me what does it entail, do you think I know what's happening there? I know nothing. I only now talk. Do you know that I only now talk? You don't know? I'm telling you now. Ask Karen. I only now talk. And next time, just now, we was talking to uh, uh, Nyap. They say, hey, uh, 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 a, this, this lady having the daughter, very stressed wedding. Then you say, next time your daughter wedding day, you know you'll be very stressed. I say, I don't think so, you know, because I don't know anything. Man. Everything is so my wife do. I tell you, when you find your wife like that, better grab. I only now talk. So what am I talking about? Leon. I don't even know whether he knows what voice or sound is. I just said, can you help? And you know what he said? He said, yes. The last I checked, he's a lecturer in nursing. He has zero knowledge on sound. Do you have any knowledge on sound? Nothing. He knows nothing. He's an ignorant mess. He, he knows nothing. He just said yes. And since then, he's been coming there faithfully every week. And every week he sits there. He comes on time. He sits with Philip and Faith and he just learned the ropes. Every week he's there. And then he'll come, and then nowadays I hear a bit, I've got this mic, and then I'll sit down there like some pop star Michael Jackson said, then he'll come and then he'll put the thing for me. He adjusts, are you okay, Daniel? Whatever. He sounds like the, he, he looks like the sound man, he acts like one, he behaves like one, his attitude is good. I tell you what, 
I suspect he's got zero aptitude. He's not talented, he's got no skill set, but his attitude far outshines, far exceeds what's required for the job. Last week, he did this. He was doing the test, and guess what? Last week, when he was doing it, this great, unpredictable character called Daniel Go decided, let's start. We know here, I said, let's start and worship God first. Did I do that last week? I think I did. Pandemonium, because usually we only worship at the end, right? That's it. God tell me something. Then you cannot tell me, uh, sorry, Daniel, cannot do this because you're not ready. You cannot write live, you know, friend. So they just carry on. And I think Leon was doing it. Leon was doing it for a bit. bit of a cock up to be expected, right? First time, all this, whatever. And then he goes to Faith and Philip and he say, this week, I want to do it again. Did Leon have any potential? Not that I know of. I also don't know whether he had any potential, but he just took the job and he did it. June married well. He's not here. Don't you think so? Why have to find this star man? Tell him to do, do. And he just faithfully every week, I've been watching him, uh, every week come, the hairstyle never changed for the last 30 years. Always the same hairstyle. But doing faithfully what God tells him to do. Knows nothing about the craft. It's not like wing or, or band. Your sound, you should know, right? Ah, huh? um, Ben, I'm watching you. You know sound. Uh. Careful, uh, I'll be talking to you soon. He knows nothing. But that is not the point. The point is he was ready. And he did what was required of him. So that's Leon. Philip, put the, your hands around his head so that the head is expanding now. Try to collapse it together. Where's Angela? Here. Next slide. Angela, hey, what is this? Show that video. Play. One more time. Okay, stop. This man did this last week. <laughs> he was playing with a team that is half or less than half his age, which should mean, technically, two times faster, and if they are decent football players, and they are a bit more skillful, and obviously more lungs to run. But this man, whoever this guy, quite a good football player, takes the ball, and says, I will do it. And when the ball, when I, when that, not, not I, when the ball hit, that man knew it was a goal. Sometimes we just have to step up. You don't think too much. When you freeze, you won't do it. I just, and that was the sweetest strike that I've had. But guess what? This is not the first video. And the best part is, I don't know why people take this video. The guy who took the video, I told him to listen. Ken, are you there? Ken, Ken, Ken. I think YouTube Live, you're there somewhere. I can, if you want to WhatsApp me. I, he, he tapes me. And this is what you get. I tell you what, it is not good enough to just have potential, but you need to step up and do it. And when you do something like that, the wall where all those young, old, tall fellas, there's nothing you can do. The ball sails in. The goalkeeper was diving. He was clutching air. What's the whole context? The people we are playing with, some are also unbelievers. I told Kurt, I don't know whether Kurt UT Life, Kurt is now, the food, is now the leader of the other team. I told Kurt, Kurt, invite these people to church. And you say which church, right? If there's a need and it's a chance, you invite them to church. Tell them, hey, you know which church you're going to? You're going to this church. You know the guy who scored the free kick? He's speaking. Guys, can we put things together? When you harness your potential and when you do something for God, can you put it in the context of the kingdom? Is it possible that even when you play something or when you do something, whatever you do, there's a chance that by doing this and playing well, you can invite someone to church? How's that? Then your potential is harnessed for the kingdom. Do you look at me so humbly, just walk away? I never like howly and sniff the air. I never I just walk away humbly, like a little dog, so silent, whatever. Kurt was so surprised. Hey, Kurt, my, Kurt, we wrote to me, say, wow, so humble. Right? Then I was thinking, a joke of this, I said, normal. Lah. It's kind of short. <laughs> Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? When you have something to do, do it for God, and when it's done, you give glory to God. Does it make sense, Ivy? 
Ivy's a book, good bookkeeper. If every year we clear because the church, all the accounts clear, Ivy will do it well. And then we will say, Ivy, job well done. Ivy will say, glory to God. If we get this right and we harness, to harness the potential God gives us, anything you do, right down to playing football, I mean, 55 year old, those people are 25. It's, they didn't score. I did. The ball just went straight in, wing. I'm not sure whether a Liverpool player can do this too, you know. Next slide, Angela. Keep quiet. You see your face. What is potential? Esther, what's potential? Potential is? Silas will say, potential is? Potential. Because Angela would have told you that. But guess what? Next slide. Potential is but potential if you don't do something. Are you with me? If we say, Angela, what is potential? Potential is what? Potential. But potential is but potential. You may be capable of doing something, but if you do not fulfill it, it, whatever you're supposed to do, does not come to existence. Some people don't know that. It's not good enough to have potential. Malcolm, I have potential this, potential that. Don't know why today getting a bit giddy. All the Liverpool jerseys around me. Oh, I got the potential this, potential. But it means nothing. It means, it means zilch if you don't do something about it. Potential is part potential. You may be capable or this fellow potential to be prime minister potential. It means nothing, friend, unless you step up and you do something about it. And if you do not fulfill it, it is but talk. And talk, my friend, is cheap. Potential, next slide, is God's gift to us. What we do with our potential is our gift to Him. If you have a potential to be a good, sound person, and maybe Leon didn't even know it, but Leon stepped out, potential is God's gift to us. What we do with our potential is our gift to Him. Does it make sense? God gives you the potential to do something well. Uh, maybe you're good at something. Joey, you're good at something. Uh, 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 Chris, you are the best grab driver. If you don't do the job well, it's nothing. It's God's gift to you, but you don't harness, you don't execute, you are not fulfilling the potential. When Kaka, the Christian footballer, looks up, when he scores and looks at the sky, when he scores a goal, wins a point, what is he thinking? When you succeed, when you do something well, and people come to say, silence, good job in leader bank. Do you look up to the sky and what do you think? What's on your mind? Do you think, ha ha, I am Silas, the Haole and Teochew, I'm the best banker in town. Or do you say, God, thank you. When I scored that goal, I really walk and I say, God, thank you. At 55, I can still do this. We need 55, you know. Potential is, don't show the next time. You know, when we all die, right? Whether you have children or not. What are some things that you want to have of? Money? Okay, when you go, you want to leave some money for the kids? Got property to leave? Not bad idea. Or whatever. Lah. Winnie will have six, six, 67,000 pairs of shoes by then. But what is the one thing you want to have zero of? Answer? Angela? Even Angela doesn't answer. The answer is potential. Because if by the time you die, you see a potential, my friend, we have a problem. You didn't do what God asked you to do. When God can say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Next slide, please. If God tells you, well done, good and faithful servant, what does it mean? Yep, when you go to heaven, you're promoted. When God says to Clarissa, well done, good and faithful servant, or Luther, what does that mean? It, I like to think it means that you have done what God asked you to do. I therefore tell you that, I suggest to you that therefore you have fulfilled what God asked you to do. Make sense? How can it be well done, good and faithful servant if Owen, God asks you to do something you never do? If God tells Karen, Karen, do Alpha and you don't do, you have not fulfilled your potential, isn't it? But when we do something and you answer to God, it, that's what it means, I think, that when we all approach the throne room of God, Ben, Wing, whichever time when we all go, God will ask Ben, apart from wearing the Holy Spirit t-shirt, what else have you done for me? I've done this, 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 this. 
I wrote a testimonial for Wing yesterday. Silas is so trying to write because Wing is trying to apply for Singapore citizenship. I wrote one nice one and then you know what he did today? He came to me, I'm really sorry. My fat backside sat on yesterday and the whole thing is crumpled. Can you give me another one? But I wrote a testimonial and I really wrote and said how I knew him, what, whatever, whatever, whatever. I said, I've seen him in church, he's loyal. He went through some legal issues, whatever, whatever. He's got wife, blah, 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 blah. blah. He's a good man. I recommend him. Have you, will you, continue to fulfill the potential that God has for you? Will you do what God wants you to do? Well done, good and faithful servant. We have achieved what God has given us. Don't know why the next slide is in black, but by the way, you may have to fail before you succeed. Just because your potential doesn't mean that first time you touch, you have minus touch, right? You may have to fail a few times before you fulfill your potential. You may have to do some things, do it until you get it right, and then you will succeed. But this is what it's going to take. A few tries before you succeed. So today I want to undergird that in this next few weeks, I want to talk about potential, and you have that, uh, uh, that, that, that thought, that, that part, that thought of this concept and, and meanings and definitions to it. Now so let's go to the book of Judges, and I want to go to the book of Judges. Next slide, please, Philip. Whereby we look at the history of personalities. When we study the Bible, can I suggest to you that, amongst other things, the Bible is rich in history, is it not? When people like Silas who likes to read the Old Testament, you're reading history. When you read history, amongst other things, you are studying personalities. Make sense? When you read the book of Judges, there are a lot of interesting characters and personalities that I think you will want to get to know. The introduction of Judges. When did it all go wrong? And I'm going to just ask you, if you have your Bibles open, you'll be flipping to the book of Judges here and there. But when did it all go wrong for the Israelites as you look at the book of Judges? In Joshua 1, if you look at Joshua, you know there's Moses. After Moses, there was Joshua. After Joshua, things begin to unravel. But guess what? If you look at the book of Joshua 1.1, 1, 1, after the death of Moses, and I'm going to stop there. When Joshua 1 started with after the death of Moses, we knew that after Moses, Joshua came, and Joshua did a reasonably good job. In Judges 1, you see Judges 1.1, 1, 1, after the death of Joshua, the Israelites then asked the Lord, who of us is to go up first to fight the Canaanites? So it's like a situation whereby you know that in the book of Joshua and the book of Judges, there is that anchor person who has passed on and then the next person comes along. But guess what? After Moses, after Joshua, there is no next person after Joshua. Do you follow? There is no real problem, a real person anointed one, so to speak. What was the problem? Go to Judges 2. If you go to Judges 2, you will see that there was going to be some problems after Joshua died. If you will read your Bibles, open your Bibles, open your Bibles to Joshua 2.6. 2, 6. 2 6, Judges 2.6. Are you there? Judges 2.6. After Joshua dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each their own inheritance. The people served the Lord throughout. Listen, the people served the Lord during Joshua's time. It's important. Serve the Lord with whatever potential they serve the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua. Notice, they serve God. When did they serve God? Throughout the lifetime of Joshua. Then you'll be asking yourself, when Joshua died, what happened? Correct? And the elders throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the elders who outlived him and who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, died at 110 and they buried him. After that, Judges 10, the problem started. What's the problem? After that, the whole generation had been gathered to ancestors. Another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. That's the beginning of the problem. When you had Moses and Joshua, no problem. When Joshua was around 110 years old, he was there to make sure that everybody served God. So if Joshua was around, Joshua make sure everybody do their job. So people like Wing have to be kicking the backside to invite someone. But I said, isn't that good? Very good. Huh? That's why Wayne got some purpose in his life. Otherwise, every day, what? Sabrina, let's go for dinner. Dinner, Sabrina, uh, uh, breakfast. After that, go and see KL, parents, whatever. But is that all? But is, or is there a purpose that God has given us? And then you do what God grips your heart to do. So during Joshua's lifetime, you can see for yourself, the people of God, the Israelites were serving God. For 110 years old, no problems. But after that, the next generation grew up. Which means that Joshua's generation was fine and dandy, but the next generation grew up. They knew, number one, they did not know God, and number two, they did not know what he did. 
So, which is why history is so important, is it? You need to know the history. You need to know what the church is about. You need to know why we're doing some things. You need to know the history and the background. If you don't know what has happened before, you have no clue. And I suspect and I fear our next generation may have that problem. Do you think so? Some of you are nodding, right? They don't know. They don't know enough of the Bible and even and, and all of us, including myself, I'm, I'm guilty. Do we, do we then therefore keep telling, talking to our children about the Bible, even pay one? I tell you now, new Christian, right? Do you Better start talking to your daughters. Read the Bible. Tell them a bit more so that everybody gets to know what God is about and the history. Right? So that's something I wanted to just bring up. What are the things that you have here? The problem is CSI. Easy to learn. There was no continuity. Number two, there was no service. Number three, there was ignorance. CSI. That's the problem with the generation that came out of Joshua. Lack of continuity, no succession. Number two, no service. Number three, ignorance. Next slide. Do the forensics. Know the history. Learn from the past. When you have a history, you learn from history, right? How do we learn? If, for example, uh, if, you, if you are in a bank, you say, last time we used to do this, huh? historically, when you do this, we get this kind of result. Will you repeat it? You won't. Maybe we'll say, uh, in a law firm, we used to do things this way. If you do it this way, you get better mileage. Do it this way. Don't you learn from those people who, who don't make it when they do startups? This is what they did. I don't think it's the way to do. Startups do this way, got chance. Right? So I think it's important to know history. So when we, when we are Christians, it is important to dwell back into the past. I mean, don't, don't keep going back and say, hey, and can you imagine if every day, after this, every week, I show you the eight-second video? <laughs> He's dwelling on the past, say, wake up, la friend. One time, enough already. Every two times already. How late and how long? I know I'm due to but forgive me. One time enough, but move on. Stop harping on the things you've done well, but move on and ask God, God, what's next? Otherwise, the potential is only but one time. That's not it. But God will keep giving us things to do, and God will supply us with the talents and the experience, and as we learn from the history, we're able to move on from there. Am I making sense to you? I want to just say that to you. Best nasi brani in town. Last week, I brought Karen. If you don't know, this is the best nasi brani in town. $13. But you eat nasi brani, and sometimes you eat already very oily and feel, feel sick, right? This one, eat already, wow. Very light. Very nice. For the record, I get no commission for introducing this nasi bunny. It is at, what's that road? Uh? North Bridge Road. It's called, I also can't see, Singapore Islamic Restaurant. It says here, the first, full stop, the original. And I went to check it out. It is the original. I'll give you some history. Islamic Restaurant has been in the food business for 96 years. Islamic Restaurant was established since 1921 by its founder, Mr. Abdul Rahman, then the master chef, well, last time we already got Master Chef, did you? Master Chef, the rich El Segov family. If you don't know the El Segov family in Singapore, you are historically ignorant. That's how you need to know history. He was the Master Chef. The current restaurant, the current uh, restaurant is currently being managed by Mr. Khalil, who's the third generation of this family. There is the history to this Nasi Brani. Wing, should we go one day? It's very good. The chicken, the brownie, eat ready, you don't feel very zai, wow, very oily, no need. Eat ready, you still can eat other things. But there's a history to this restaurant. It is important to know the history of the church, history of the restaurant, and some of us would like to drink the wine, the history even of the vineyards. Isn't it? What more? The history of the characters of the people around. What was the further problem with the Israelites next year? Next slide, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Not only did they not serve God, you know what they started to do? They served the Baals, the foreign gods, the idols. Not only do you do that, meaning that they don't serve God, right? What do they do? <laughs> they served the Baals instead. Don't serve your God, serve the Baals, forsook the Lord. So it's a really a 360 degree turn. One side, move to the other. Used to serve God, stop serving God forsook God, and then served the Baals. Served the Baals, followed and worshipped various gods, aroused the Lord's anger. That was the problem during the time of Judges. But God, can I tell you, if you don't know by now, secret, God actually is a softie. 
Because despite doing all these things, and you see time and again, I tell you now, the book of Judges, despite doing all the time, every time the Israelites mark it out, when the Israelites cry out to God for help, what did God do? God came for them. Every time, no. <laughs> and here we are telling me, some people tell me, oh, God, very strong, very whatever. But guess what? You're going to read the book of Judges. Every time, the, every time the God will send a judge, the judge will deliver them. But after that, the, the Israelites take scout, much like some of us, go back and repeat, Samla, do the nonsense again. And each time they, they do something wrong, they come back to God and they cry out to God. Guess what? God comes back every time. That's the God we serve. Which is why it's a chance for all of us. And if there's somebody you who sits out there and say, I cannot come to God. I know people, I cannot come to God. I'm too wicked. I know, maybe Nyam will know who I'm talking about. I'm not ready to come to God. You know why? I'm a bad person. I don't come to God in this style of reason. Yeah, but God takes us anytime. Don, I'm waiting for that man to see me, eh? the one that we talk about. I want to see him. Anybody can come to God. God will take you at any time. God will raise up judges, and he did. If you look at Judges 2, 16 to 20, he was with the judge. He saved the Israelites as long as the judges lived. But when the judge died, the people returned to their ways. But what did God do? God left the enemies of Israelites to be there, to test the Israelites to see whether they would obey the Lord's commands. So here you are, the Israelites not really following God. In fact, forsook God, went to serve the foreign gods, and God in his love, whenever the, the, the Jews cry to the Lord for help, he will raise up a judge. When we talk about a judge, it's not a judge as in, I go to court, lawyer, judge. That's one. You will see that, for example, this, this lady I'll talk about later, her name is Deborah, in Judges 5 and in the book of Judges 4. Deborah was a prophetess. She was also helping to resolve disputes. That's what we think of as a judge, right? If, for example, Penny say, can you help my, my, my client who needs a, a, a lawyer and then we go to court and then the judge will decide. That's one. But in those times, a judge here is also a deliverer. When we talk about judges, it's someone who delivers. So in this case, the, the judges here that were raised by God, they were the ones that were going to deliver the Israelites from their enemies. So you see this repetition of history throughout the book of Judges. So I want to give you the context as we de a deep dive into some of the people. Now, what kind of judges did God raise? Can I tell you now? God raised people who were flawed, and some of them were deeply flawed. Samson is, uh, the, like I told you, Samson is not the look like wing type, probably look a bit like Owen type. Not the strongest man. Deep flaws. Even Gideon. Gideon is uh, really a wuss of a man, if you ask me. Uh, I'll talk about Gideon next week. It's like God told him to do something, then he'll say, uh, God, can you do this? Uh, do the fleece uh, test one time, test two times, test three times. If I were God, I would have sent fire to burn him alive. But God was so patient with him. So these people that God used were all flawed characters. They were human, so human that the weaknesses were for all to see. When you read the book, you can see for yourself, these are deeply flawed characters, but God used them. And they were able to still, notwithstanding the fact that they were weak, they fulfilled their potential. Just because you're weak does not mean you're not potential. And what makes sense to you? You don't have to be perfect to your potential. You have potential to do something, but despite you having the potential of the talent, you are still flawed. How many of us here is not flawed? You're deluded beyond belief. You are all flawed. All of us are flawed. Have you bought jeans? And some of these jeans, they're all cut up. Have you bought jeans that if you turn the label, they say, this jeans is purposely dis discolored. And they tell you, wash with hand. It's all flawed. It's like, it's like it's meant to be not perfect. Correct? Some of us are not perfect. Either character-wise, genetically not perfect, physically deformed, intellectually slower than others. But God made you anyway. And just because you are any of those imperfect persons, be it imperfect physically, imperfect genetically, imperfect spiritually, imperfect financially, whatever, God can use you. It's the potential that God is looking at. But the judges were flawed characters, yet able to fulfill their potential. They had divine strength in, in their human weaknesses. And in this next few weeks, I want to talk about them. The Holy Spirit, importantly, that's why I tell you, my friend, you are a godsend. Looking at you now, 
your shirt macam the the color of the seed some more. Holy Spirit came upon them. The judges. When they begin to rule and deliver, Samson a few times, you can read, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And as, as this church is beginning to grow during ministry time, we always want to talk about it, Sabrina. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So that we all begin to experience him more and more in the days to come. The judges were not only judges as we know it. Thank you, next slide. As we know it, they were here to resolve disputes. Like I said, they're deliverers. They were also the troubleshooters. They were people who saved the Jews, the Israelites from themselves and from outside forces. So judges were here to deliver. We're here to resolve disputes, but they're also here to fight those enemies. And most of the time, they were to help the, the, the Israelites with the people, the outside forces. Okay? Sometimes inside, but also most of the time, as you can see, the book of Judges, helping those from outside forces. I give you now some of the smaller characters. And if you look at the book of Judges, all of them, different people, different characters. And some of them have got four chapters. Samson got four chapters. Yep. Uh, Gideon got two, some only got a few lines. Let me just quickly run by some of them, and today I want to end with a lady that I thought was quite interesting. But let me go to Judges 3. If you go to the book of Judges 3, you see, for example, this is girl, this man called Othniel. Oth, I hope I spelled it correctly, pronounce it. Othniel. Othniel was, was raised up. If you look at Judges 3, Othniel, it is in verse 9. Again, Maybe you go to verse 7, the Israelites did evil, Judges 3, 7. They forgot the Lord their God, served the Baals and the Estras, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel. So he sold them to the enemies, the Kushan, king of Aram, to whom the Israelites were subject for eight years. But when they cried out to God, again, you see the Israelites defy God, right? Don't serve God, went to serve foreign gods. But when they cried out to God, God soft-hearted. Raised up to them a deliverer, Othniel, son of Kenes, who saved them. The Spirit of the Lord came, and he became Israel's judge, and he went to war. So that's one character that was interesting. God came, used Othniel. Uh, uh, nothing much is known about him, only that God appointed him. And when God came and raised him up, because the Jews were starting to, to, to really be under oppression, God heard their cry, raised up this man, the Holy Spirit came upon him so that he was gifted to become the judge. Ehud. Ehud is another judge. I thought it was quite interesting. If you look at Judges 3, Ehud is someone that was uh, used by God. If you look at Judges 3.12, I go to Judges 3.12 for you. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and because they did evil, the Lord gave them king of Moab, power over Israel. That's the enemy. 3.15, again, the Israelites cried out to the Lord, and he gave them a deliverer. A deliverer. Ehud, a left-handed man. Interesting. Let me tell you the story about Ehud, the left-handed man. So when it came to a point in time whereby Ehud, the left-handed man, had a chance to avenge and deliver the Jews, right? He was going to fight the king of the Moabites. And guess what? He had a chance, a chance encounter with the king himself. He's left-handed. If you're left-handed, where will you draw your, your weapon from? Which leg? Left-handed, draw from the right. Correct? But typically, the people are right-handed. So when you're right-handed, where do you draw your sword from? From the left. So in customs check in JB, they only check on the left leg because most of the people, right hand. Understand? But this guy is a softball. Softball, therefore, the weapon is on the right leg. Nobody check the right leg. Goes in, past the sensor, tat, no, tat, tat, tat. take the thing out like that. Kill the king. God uses anybody. Who is left-handed here? I am. No, I'm not left-handed. I'm a confused kid. Can I tell you a secret? I write left hand. When I play games, I use right hand. When I play badminton last time, six years old, you know what I did? Owen, I serve with left hand. I switch to right hand to rally. Nowadays, I switch my hand to right hand because when I go to the... One day, I woke up, I said, I will fulfill my potential to not be embarrassed at the Chinese restaurant anymore. Every time I go for a wedding dinner, nine people, right hand, I left hand. Then I clash with them. I said, I will never have this again. And I switched to the right hand. Then now I'm part of the crowd. But God can use the left handers. Ehud, the left hander, was not detected because he drew the sword or the weapon from the right hand. So that is Ehud for you. God can use a left hander. God can use anybody. Look at my slides. Shamga. Shamga is this guy. This is probably the least recognize so to speak just one liner i read shamga for you judges 331 after he good came shamga son of nf who struck down 600 philistines with an ox goat he too saved israel 
And today, now to end, I want to talk about a lady. We talk about potential of men, but there's also potential of women. And today, Mother's Day, I didn't plan it, but God allowed it. Today, we end with a female character. A lady, Deborah Judge, was summoned, summoned Barak. This is another, after, after Shamgar, then we have Deborah. Go with me to Judges 4. If you go to Judges 4, you look at 4-4. Now, Deborah, a prophet, was leading Israel at the time. She held court. She was helping to deal with all the disputes. And then at Israel, as uh, Israelites were again now under the oppression of the enemy, she sent for Barak, the son, and she said to him, look at Judges 4-6, the Lord, through Deborah, speaks to Barak. The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Barak, go take with you 10,000 men and lead them to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, the enemy, with his chariots and his troops and give the enemy to your hands. So listen to this. This is Deborah, Deborah telling Barak, Barak, take 10,000 men, go and fight the enemy and Sisera is the commander. God will deliver the enemy into your hands. God said it. So clearly, what was Barak's reply? Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Sounds like a primary one answer. Deborah tells Barak to go and prophesy that when you go, God will lead Sisera into your hands. Can't be clearer than that, right? What's his answer, Barak? If you go with me, she says to Deborah prophetess, if you go with me, I will go. You don't go, I don't go. Go people like that. Nah? Silas, go together, London. You go, I go. Lah. Then God will say, you don't go, I don't go. Anything wrong with Barak asking Deborah to go? And saying that, if you don't go, I won't go. Better look now. Dawn, what do you think? What do you think of the answer from Barak? If you go, I will go. But if you don't go, I won't go. Anything wrong? All looking down. How about you look at verse 9? Certainly I will go with you, Deborah says, but because of the course you are taking, the honour will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. Can I suggest to you that what Barak did was an act of no faith. Deborah, already, the leader, already prophesied that you go with the 10,000 men, God will deliver the enemy to your hands. God didn't say, you go and Deborah will go with you. God said, Silas, you go. But what does Silas do? Silas will say, uh, uh, I can go, la, but we need you go with me. You don't go, I don't go. Ask yourself sometimes, is God asking you to do something to fulfill your potential by doing it with someone else or God says, you go? And God didn't say, go with someone else. A thought. But the fact that he asked for Deborah to go, and the answer, I think, is telling in verse 9, isn't it? I will go with you, Deborah says, but because of the course you are taking, meaning that you insist I go with you, the honour will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak, and then the rest of it, I think it's history. They began to fight and true enough, the prophecy came into play. The 10,000 men came and Sisera was going to be defeated. Jump all the way down. Today is later. I saw Gong Gu Si. Just go all the way down. You go to Deborah 4.18. Deborah, Judges 4.15. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera, the enemy, and all his chariots and army by the sword and Sisera got down from his chair and fled on front. So it came to pass, enemies were routed. Now left only Sisera. Sisera is the general, huh? the enemy, the number one enemy. Barak 416 pursued the chariots and army as far as Hesrosheth, and all Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. All the enemy was destroyed except Sisera, the big one, Darth Vader. Sisera fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Canaanite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazar and the family of Heber, the canon. So God destroyed, as per the prophecy, Barak dutifully did it, but asked Deborah to come, but Deborah said, because you do it, you know what? The, the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. 
So now Sisera, the only one left. Sisera comes to this part and then she flats on foot to the tent of Joel. Who is Joel? Joel is a woman. She is a tent maker. Take it from me during those times. The women were the ones who pitched the tents. Okay? She is the wife of Herber and like it or not, Herber, again take it from me, is a person who sits in a fence. Herber, the Canaan, the Herbert, the Canaanites, these people, they used to have, I think, the sentences from Moses, the tribe of Moses. But guess what? They were sitting in the fence. Here, they're living very close to the Israelites. They were striking, but yet at the same time, they hedge. Bankers, listen, he, he was hedging because he was hedging in the sense that he formed an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazor, the enemy, and the family of Herbert. So the Canaanite fellow hedged and wanted to make sure that although he still wanted to be friendly with the Israelites, better hedge and be pally with the enemy. So there was this alliance. And because of this alliance, Sisera found it comfortable to approach Jabel, Jael, who then introduced herself. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, listen, come my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. Jael went out to meet. So Jael, the tent maker, goes out to meet Sisera and tells the arch enemy of the Israelites. Come, my Lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered the tent and she covered him with a blanket. Very smart. Enemy comes in, what do you do? Hey, I tell you something. You had to ask yourself when that was happening, how was she feeling? She knew that all the enemies are routed, only left Darth Vader and Darth Vader is now with you. What does she do? She goes out there, come, my Lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. Darth Vader enters her tent. And what does she do? She covers him with a blanket. Very smart. Market police people better learn. Not only for your enemies, but you know, catch a deal, do the right things. First thing, cover him with a blanket. I'm thirsty, she says. Please give me some water. What does she do? She opens a skin of milk, give him a drink, and then cover him up. Ask only for water, Stanley. But what did she do? She give milk. Another marketplace tactic we all should know. Ask for something, over deliver. Ah oh, Ben, people ask for something, you give something better. And then cover it up. Next page, Judges 4, 20. Stand in the doorway, she says in the tent. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there? Say no. So Darth Vader says, hey, Sarah says, don't, uh, I, I'm the one being routed. I only left my, all my horses or chairs or kapu already. Make sure that you protect me. Verse 21. But Joel, Haber's wife, picks up a tent pack, a tent pack and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the pack through his temple into the ground and he died. Listen, uh. so drink the milk, right? smart, why drink milk? Why serve milk? You drink milk, you sure sleep, man, Don. We were babies, all suck, all the milk, drink it, you sure sleep, right? So here, instead of water, give milk, lull him to sleep, after he already, <coughs> YouTube, like, can hear my snoring, <coughs> and then he comes in, he she tips those and she takes the weapon, the only weapon, the M16, the knife, the what? Her weapon is the weapon she's been using all her life. She's the tent maker. The only thing she knows is the, the pack and the hammer. She takes the pack and the hammer, goes to the person who now very shook because number one, don't give water, give milk, give milk already, then cover a blanket. Who won't sleep? Lao into the sense of complacency, deep sleep, goes there, takes the pack. My goodness, cold-blooded murder. Takes the pack. I should, devil, come, Jeep, come. Lie down here. I take the tag. Your, imagine Jeep's head like that, right? Take the tag. Bang, the pack. The hammer whack, the pack. What does the Bible say? Goes into the head. Not only stop there. Are you all gross out already? Into the ground. What's the diameter of the head? Bang into the ground. And it's not plastic. The skull. 
drive through. And he died, of course. Just then, Barak came by to pursue, in pursuit of Sarah, and Jael went out to meet him. Almost matter of fact, you know, they say, hey, Barak, how are you? Come, I want to show you something. <laughs> He's thinking, what, right? Show me, uh, got, wow, got, got business, uh, come, come. I will show you the man you're looking for. So he went with her, and there lay Cicero with the ten pack through his head. Dead. On that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan. Jabin was the king, Cicero was the commander. On that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin until they destroyed him. Jael is like Leon. There's nothing to tell me that she knew that she was going to do this. There was no warning that Cesara will come into a path. I don't see Deborah saying that, okay, you Barak, hopeless fella, don't want to behave like a man, right? Never mind, I go with you, but because of this, the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. The woman's name is Jael, and I'm going to tell Jael now. I don't get the impression that Jael knows. Jael knows nothing. But when the time came, she was for the Israelites, notwithstanding the peace treaty or alliance that the husband has with the enemy king, King Jabin of the Canaanites. He did, she did, what she needed to do. Almost on the spot, no time to rehearse, <laughs> Darth Vader is here, invite him in, give him blanket, ask for water, give milk, say, stand by and watch for me, never say anything, one sleep, go in there, and did what was required of him. I like this. There was a song of Deborah after this. If you read Judges 5.24 with me. Most blessed of women, Bijayal. The wife of Heber the Kenite. Most blessed of ten dwelling women. He asked for water and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him curdled milk. Her hand reached for the ten pack her right hand for the workman's hammer. She struck Cicera, she crushed his head, she shattered and pierced his temple. At her feet he sank, he fell, there he lay. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell, dead. There's a song in honor of her. But I didn't even know this person existed until I was reading the book. I said, my goodness, what kind of woman is this? did exactly what was asked of her. Skip a few slides and I'll tell Oliver to come and give a testimony. Joel was, next slide please Leon, thank you, courageous. Just come, give the right verbal assurance, give the right material assurance. Marketplace people will better learn. <laughs> give the right assurance in terms of material, say the right thing. Give the blanket, cover them up, give the right drink, ask for water, give milk, soothe him to sleep. But when it came to deliver, ice cold did the job. What a woman. I ended with this thought of mine. Next slide. She did not have any potential. I didn't think. She was just a tent maker. Doing what she knows what to do. Killing people cannot be. But tent maker with that tool that she had, she did what? God asked of her to do. She didn't have any potential, so to speak. She rose to the occasion when needed and when it mattered. Was she a judge, so to speak? She's not. The judges will be people like Shamga, Ehud of Nile, and even Deborah, so to speak, right? But this lady, out of nowhere, out of obscurity, came and did what was required of her. Immortalized in the song, Most Blessed of Women. I thought that was a wonderful testimony. And as I read that, I was thinking, God, you can use anybody. You look at Bible characters, you think Samson and Gideon, you have not heard of Jael. Who has heard of Jael before? I never, until I was forced to read this, I said, my goodness, what a woman. A woman of substance. 
to mess around with her, or whack the pen, the tag, bang, into the ground, go through your whole entire scalp. With that gory ending, I'm going to ask Olivia to just give a short testimony. Olivia, we've not seen for some time, and there's a reason for it, but I wanted her to just give a short testimony. Can I have a mic for her? Philip, thank you. And then uh, I'll come back and wrap up. Come, can we welcome Olivia? Evening, church. Um, have you ever played uh, one of those uh, icebreaker games that required you to remember names of a group of people that you're meeting for the first time? In one version, you think of an adjective, a descriptive word that starts with the same first letter as your name, and you attach it in front of your name. The second person has to introduce the first person with the adjective and himself with an adjective. The third person introduces the first two and herself, and this goes on until the last person in the group gets a turn. So my name starts with O, and there aren't many descriptive words that begin with O. While you're helping me to think of a suitable adjective, I'd like to share one of the many stories of God's faithfulness in my life. Last year in January, as a healthcare worker, I was one of the first in Singapore to schedule a vaccination appointment. As I have pre-existing medical concerns, I sent out a prayer request on the morning of my vaccination appointment that I will be protected from all side effects from the vaccine. To my surprise, at the pre-vaccination screening, I was turned away by the vaccination team. The doctor classified my history of allergies due to unknown causes to be severe and recommended that I wait for a traditional protein-based vaccine. At that point, I did not anticipate the unusual battles I would face in the year ahead. For most part of last year, I pretty much carried on with life like every one of you and learned to adapt to the new pandemic norm. I wore a mask whenever I went outdoors. I worked wearing a mask all day at work. It's quite amazing how our physical body can adapt. Initially, I felt breathless after speaking for a full hour of consultation. I felt soreness behind my ears at the end of a long work day. Gradually, my body adapted. I could last longer hours without feeling breathless, and my ears did not ache as badly as it used to. However, at the end of the work week, I did feel physically more exhausted that pre than the pre-pandemic mask-free days. I learned to harness technology, just like most of us. We became uh, Zoom warriors at work, right? Uh, I provided uh, telehealth service and trainings online. Church and cell groups were online. Social gatherings were small and hosted at home. Unfortunately, the virus was strong, as we all learned, and mutating, and regulations were continuously tightened as the year progressed. Without a vaccine pass, my movements became restricted. And there were moments when I felt oppressed and discriminated as a minority. I asked God if I heard him wrongly. I asked him how long more I had to wait for a suitable vaccine. I prayed that I would contract COVID-19 so that the mental stress and emotional pain would end. In the process, God brought me through deep lessons to submit to the authorities he had placed above me and to trust that he is in control of my life. The battle belongs to the Lord and as long as I'm on his side, it's the victorious side. That's what I believe, even though it was not easy. But God's word sustained me. His word reminded me that nothing should rob me of my purpose and joy in life. He showed me creative ways to serve and love others within the constraints I was in. Although I could not go out and feast for Christmas, I invited small groups to my home and we spent meaningful times connecting and making Christmas wreaths. The battle reached its peak in January this year. 
and D-Day came after all. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 reminded me that God, what God opens, no one can close. And what He closes, no one can open. So when the door at the workplace was shut suddenly with a loud bang, I immediately recognized that it was Him. I had to make a difficult decision. My options were, one, to vaccinate and keep my livelihood in a meaningful job that I felt called to do. Or, two, to hold on to God's promise and wait for the door He will open. As I waited upon the Lord, I realized that although God is almighty and all-powerful, He didn't use His authority to dictate the path that I should take. Instead, He walks alongside me and through His word in the Bible, which do not contradict one another, He guided me towards making a decision. Either way, I believe God will see me through because He is my loving Father. So I asked, which decision will please him more? I read in 1 Samuel 5, verse 22, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? I chose to obey the voice of the Lord. I, heard, uh, I first heard the year before in January 2021, and which was repeated many times throughout 2021. I left my job with no idea where and when the next door will open. But I held on to the promise in the verse following Revelations 3, 7, in verse 8. I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. This is the fourth month since I left my job. Although I have no income, God has provided for me and He has blessed me richly with time. Time to be restored by Him, time for much-needed physical rest and time to connect with family and friends. Recently, God opened a new door. It is with much fear and trembling that I'm stepping through the new door. My prayer is that I will be faithful to the new purpose He's bringing me into. God is the author and finisher of our faith. He has written out our story and He will complete it. I want to encourage all of us to fix our eyes on Jesus and run the race with endurance so that we will fulfill our potential and receive the crown from Him. May those who come behind us find us faithful. I hope to hear those who come after me through the heavenly gates Introduce me as Obedient Olivia. Finally, I wish to thank my cell leader, Joanne, my cell mates, and Elder Daniel for supporting me spiritually through this challenging season. All glory to God. Thank you all for listening. For the record, um, we're not anti government, we're not anti party, we're not anti vaccine but that's the journey of our sister. Uh, when I first heard of her journey, I was thinking, it takes a lot of guts. Uh. The simple option is to, okay, I just jab and just move on. But she didn't. And God's opening doors. And I was just having a discussion. He says, oh, I, I remember meeting her. Was it, was it in 2020 at my place? He says, hey, Daniel, what you said is coming true. Uh. I'm in private practice. And now she's doing something new. Pray for her. The doors are opening, but you step into the unknown. But isn't that faith... If you can see where you're going, it's not faith, my friend. If we started a church knowing that, uh, if we started a church knowing that you'll be what it is today, will you have started? I think so. But God won't show you, no. You just do first, and the rest will open. I didn't tell her to end the way she did, but I like the way she ended. We have to step into our destiny. Listen, and the potential God has given us will be shown in the days and the months to come. Pray for her. It's not easy. She's got a friend, a colleague as well. But isn't that faith? You can't see it. But may God prod you. So for the record, YouTube Live, I always tell people, I, I'm prepared to say something tomorrow, the whole world will know. I'm anti nothing. I pray for the nation Singapore. Some people, 
they have decided not to do certain things in life, I respect that. Everybody makes a choice pertaining to what they do. Isn't that potential for you? And today I want to end. I know it's Mother's Day. And I told Nigel to stand by because Nigel is not a mother. Nigel will play. This is what I want to do. I want the mothers who were prayed for last week, including Winnie who didn't come. Winnie is payback time. I want the mothers to come forward to pray for those of us who are not mothers. There's something about mothers, Karen. Mother's mother. I will never be a mother. I want to say thank God. But there's something about learning how to be a mother. I want you mothers to pray for us to release and un- ask God to unleash the potential in us. And if you happen to pray for Olivia, pray for her business. And for people like Denise. Denise, you never pray for people before. No need to panic. You just come lay hands and so soon fulfill potential who stop. Amen. And those who are prayed for by Denise, historically, when you check the history, know that she was the first person you prayed for. Everybody has the potential. Will we harness it? Will we be like Joel? Will we be like the judges that God has called? Even Karen, I'll tell my wife, Karen, don't play the ministry. That's why, Nigel, thank God for you. You're a man. Be a man and come and play the guitar. But as we pray and as we come, I want you to come forward. And guys, those who are single, your identity is not in your marital status. For those of you who are struggling and maybe you find that your job, you earn earn more, your identity is not in how much you earn. Your identity is found in you being the child of God who's got tons of potential. God will press the right button if you only will. I am rooting for you, Olivia, that you'll succeed. And when you succeed, please come back here and give glory to God. Isn't this wonderful? I've got so many stories to tell. I was just checking with Sabrina. I said, does this thing really happen? And it did. I'll save it for another day. I said, Wayne told me, and they said, this happened. And I know your answer. You said, I won't tell you the story. I'll save it another day. Today, too many stories. Today. And then Sabrina said, yeah, this church is alive, man. This kind of thing also can happen. But when we hear God, we just obey, isn't it? I'll save it to another story. Don't ask her. You're embargoed, news embargoed. Don't tell anyone. If not, I'll sue you for defamation. But when we trust God, He will come. Nigel, our musician, please come. Nigel's the best person to play. Never going to be a mother. He was there to watch my, to see my free kick. Was it a good free kick? Yeah, Yeah, he was there. I got witness. Let's pray. It's interesting, the song's called Spirit Song. When we come, I want the mothers to come. Karen, the mother. Karen, the two mothers. Angela, the mother, the one with the potential. Nigel's wife. Winnie. Ivy. Chris. Denise. All come. I want the men and the single ladies come forward. I want the mothers to pray. When you pray, mothers, pray for the mothering spirit to be upon us. That we'll learn how to raise up the church, raise up the cell, shepherd the marketplace people, be like a Joel in a good way. People ask for water, give milk. When people ask something, over-deliver. Use that Joel testimony in a good way. I'm not telling you to murder someone, but Joel did the right thing. You understand? Over-deliver. Under-promise. Give glory to God. And when the Spirit comes, that's why God had to go. Because if God don't go, the Spirit cannot come. those who we prayed for, the mothers will come later but those who are going to be prayed for, can you come forward now? So we be prayed for, will you come? Step out now and come forward so that the mothers can pray for us. Receive a touch and God harness the potential. I want you to step forward now. The non-mothers 
Don't let me call you, but you come. Men also can come. You will never be a mother. That's not the point. Will you come? Oh, let the Son of God. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart, satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you. Spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you sing Jesus Lord come and fill the lamp Talk again as we prepare for ministry. I want the mothers to come forward. There are some ladies here. Will you come forward? The mothers, the two Karens, mothers come. Angela, lay hands upon the daughters of the faith and pray for them that God will unleash the potential and to bless them. I cannot believe that the men are not here. Don't let me call names. The men should be prayed for. Will the men come forward? You need to be prayed for. God wants to unleash potential. There's a man here. The last I checked, Don's a man is still a man. Can a man come forward? Oh, let the God. Oh, come and sing the song with gladness as your hearts are filled with joy. Lift your hands in sweet surrender to sadness give him all your years of pain and you enter into life in Jesus name sing Jesus oh Jesus Jesus oh Jesus Jesus Jesus, oh Jesus, Lord Jesus, come and fill your lamps, Jesus. Jesus, oh Jesus, you are Jesus. Come and fill, come and fill your lamps. the chorus come and fill them Holy Spirit Lord release your anointing
just give a couple more seconds and some of you still praying pray when God is ministering. I know God's touching lives. Will you receive from the Lord as we bring the service to a close? Praise your holy name. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. The rest of you who are being prayed for, if you're not being prayed for, I ask you to just come. I know some of you are here and even the mothers, Joey, good to see you. I don't know why I texted you yesterday. I have no idea. But were you the one who told me when I, when I texted you, you cried? God is doing something new. Of all things, I decided, Sharon, I just WhatsApp her. I don't know why. I didn't WhatsApp you, right? I WhatsApp her, I said, come to church. And then she said, when I asked her, I WhatsApp her, she cried. God is doing something, guys. This is so precious. I can't believe it. Karen, you will lead an alpha cell that is going to be brimming with potential. Men and women will court your favor. I will be there to capo if there are men so that Silas and I will do something. I want to unleash potential. Do it for the kingdom of God. Amen. Raise your hands before the Lord as we come to the end. I know some of you. Father, thank you. Lord, release, release the Holy Spirit so that, Lord, we know that you are alive and well yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, I pray for potential. Not only potential, but Lord, you'll be zero. There'll be no potential left because we have done it. So well done. I speak into your spirit. Well done, good and faithful servant. Do the work of his kingdom. We bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. You're dismissed.